All right, well, we're going to get it started today at a high level, and then we're going to get more and more in depth over, over uh, throughout the day. And so we're starting with this kind of high level, the evolution of community-driven business. So future is a community of the industry, uh, the future of the community industry, or the alternative title that I have for this talk is how community made me wear, wear girl pants. <laughs> so I wore girl pants in high school. I was really into the hardcore scene. Anyone into hardcore? Yeah. It's always like one. <laughs> we used to go to like venues kind of like this, and there would be these like ruthless bands that like doesn't even sound like music. They're just growling into a mic, and people are like punching and kicking. And, and the style was you wore uh, a tight black band shirt and, and girl pants. <laughs> this is not me. Thankfully, I could not find any pictures of me with girl pants on the internet. But this is basically what it looked like. And before you judge me too much, this was, you know, 2003, 2002, so there weren't, you know, if guys wanted to wear tight pants back then, they didn't exist. All they had to do was like baggy Jenkos and crap like that. So if you wanted tight pants, you kind of had to wear girl pants. And, and it was like a crazy scene. I remember the first time I bought my first pair of girl pants, my mom just flipped a shit. My mom's in the crowd. Where's my mom? She usually screams. Oh, there she is. She's right there in the back with my dad. So, so she, she flipped a shit. You remember that, Mom? You were so upset. Uh, it was like a big issue. But then she got over it when she realized that she could start borrowing my pants whenever she wanted. <laughs> and so you know, I got into this crazy scene. It was one of the first times I really felt a strong sense of community. And we would go, we'd leave town, we'd drive half an hour to go to these crazy shows and punch and kick. I got, I got kicked in the face once, and I shattered my jaw. I was wired shut for two months, you know? Tried hitting on girls in high school with girl pants talking like this. I had like blended hamburgers in my hand. It was not my, pr my proudest moment. But I did all this because of community. Like, I didn't exactly, I wasn't the best at, at fitting in uh, throughout my, my childhood. And this was one of the first times I really felt that sense of belonging. Uh, and it, it brought me to do things that growing up, I played lacrosse, I was like a straight A student, I like was a good like buttoned up nice kid. And then all of a sudden I'm wearing girl pants and getting my jaw broken. So my point here, I think I have a point, is that communities change who we are. Right? They form our identities. Uh, they, they help you make decisions in life. Sometimes you do crazy things, sometimes they're normal things, but we are essentially our communities, right? So our identities are a collection of all the communities we've been a part of throughout our life. And can you imagine that? We all here build community for a living, for businesses, right? Can you imagine that opportunity that businesses have to become a part of somebody's identity? Think about the companies that have become you know, recognizable brands that people love and identify with. You think about um, Harley Davidson, you think about Apple, even things like the Yelp Elite, right? It becomes part of the person's identity, literally part of who they are. That's something that companies should be paying anything for, right? And that's the opportunity that we have today, and that's what we're all doing. Because ultimately, everything in business is about trust. This is my dad. My dad's also back there. What's up, Ian Spinks? <laughs> so my dad taught me about trust. Both my parents are immigrants from Israel and Ireland. And my dad's been working in the same industry for the last 28 years. He sells plush toys, stuffed animals. So if you want a stuffed animal, he's your guy. You can get it for you for like 10 cents from China. And he's been in this industry for 28 years, and it's a volatile industry. Like, the, the weather changes in the summer, and all of a sudden, everyone goes out of business. Um, it's, it's not the easiest business, but he, he's kept a lot of the same customers throughout almost three decades because he's one of the most honest people I know in the world. He's 
a purely good person that does right by people. And no matter what happens in the industry, he always, they always stay with him because he developed trust. And I learned this from him at a very early age. And that's ultimately what all business is about. Why do we market to people? Because we want them to trust our brand and our products enough that they make a purchase. Why are we focusing on improving our products? Because we want them to trust it. Right? Everything we're doing, whether it's advertising, marketing, events, community, it's all about building trust with people and getting them to the point where they trust us enough that they're willing to purchase our products, become a customer, become a member of our community. So business has always functioned this way. But what's changed now is the context. We're now in this social era where we're all connected, we have our mobile phones, we're hyper, hyper connected, we're able to collaborate in ways that literally never existed before in the history of humanity, right? For the last 99.999% of humanity, we didn't have any of this technology, we, don't, we weren't able to communicate in this way. It's only in this very, very small part of our existence that we, we are now communicating in this way that is unprecedented. So we have no idea exactly what kind of impact that's gonna have on how we create value for each other, on this concept of business, it's changing. Because we have these collaboration tools and we're connected, now a business isn't just about us creating the value and shipping it out, it's about creating this ecosystem of whether you're an employee or an ambassador or a contributor, anybody who believes in the mission and wants to contribute to seeing it happen in the world is part of your business, right? The definition of business is changing. And we're seeing this, we're actually seeing this change. Community isn't just about support forums anymore, it's not just about social media. <laughs> it's a core part of how our businesses are functioning. It's being integrated into everything, support, product, how we grow, how we're actually creating our products. 78% of companies are now built on open source software. The very fabric of how our businesses function, the technology is actually built by communities, by these platforms. And we're seeing, I'm, this isn't just a theory, we, we recently conducted a huge research study with Leader Networks, our partner, and um, we, we saw some really interesting stuff in how companies are investing in community. This was also supposed to have more words, but the top two reasons companies are launching communities are one, customer attention, and two, to fuel ideas and innovation. Right? That's completely different from seven years ago when all you could hear about in community was a support forum. It's becoming integrated into how we're developing our products, how we're coming up with new ideas, how companies are innovating. That is the advantage that they have. And it's being built into the customer deal flow. It's being built into how we retain customers and keep them coming back. Our research also showed that 80% of companies considered it important to integrate core business processes into community. That means that as people are going through purchase flows, as they're interacting with our products, every aspect of our touch point with customers, they're trying to build it into their community, right? So it's not just an add-on. It's not just, we have a product, we have a website, let's throw on a community, and now we're building community. It's not like that anymore. Where it's going is being completely integrated into a business. And it's not just us doing this research and finding these stats. MIT just released a study, and they found that uh, community is one of the primary catalysts of innovation, resulting in up to 37% increase in company performance. Right? At the close of that study, they said, community and purpose are the new sources of advantage in the social era. This was just released a few weeks ago. Right? So this is completely shifting. The research is showing that not only is this a theory, but companies are actually starting to think about community as a completely integrated way into their business. And so I want you to remember one thing. As we're talking today, the community industry of the last 10 years is drastically different from the community industry of the next 10 years. For those of you who have been in the industry like I have for the last 10 years, it's been a struggle. We've been limited in scope, it's been unclear what the value is, and for the most part, people confuse it with just support and social media management. But that's not where things are going. No, over the next 10 years, we're gonna see more and more companies integrating community into their core business processes. Their product and innovation is gonna be driven by it, the way they grow. Their actual products will be built by communities. We're seeing engagement communities being built into companies. The future looks very different. But it's not gonna be without its challenges. We're still 
we still have a lot to overcome. Our research also showed that the number one challenge that community professionals face is a lack of internal awareness about the value of community. Still today, this is the number one. It wasn't uh, community engagement. That was our number one concern before launching community. But of the people building community, their number one challenge was lack of internal support and awareness. And then we asked companies who had com communities actually fail, why did it fail? Number one reason uh, branded online communities fail is lack of internal support and awareness. So again, it wasn't that people weren't engaged. That was number two. Number one was that we're not getting buy-in and support from our very own businesses who are hiring us. There's still this confusion around the value of community, and it's still hard for us to get that buy-in. Right? So there's, there's a clear gap in understanding here between what we do, clearly businesses are interested in it. We're seeing more and more community professionals being hired every day, more community programs being integrated, and of course, of the companies that are integrating community, they're integrating it into their business processes. It's not just an add-on, and yet we're still failing when we're lacking those internal support and resources. And I think part of the reason is because businesses have become obsessed with the short run. Look at a lot of the trends and conversations that are happening now. Growth hacking, right? Just how do you convert people to your email list as quickly as possible, right? We look at data in terms of how do I try something and get a result in the next seven days, right? Businesses have become obsessed with this optimization in the short run, but community is a long run play. Community is about building something for the next year, for the next 10 years, which is hard when you're talking about data, right? It's hard to get buy-in for something that you need that much time to prove out. But we need to be able to change the way we tell the story, right? If you think about it, if community value looks like this, say we're comparing community to advertising, right? The green line is community, the red line is advertising, and we're looking at it in a, in a three-month test. Clearly, you're gonna say, well, advertising is crushing community. Like, there's clearly very little value here in this community program. What if the reality actually looks like this, though? Community has exponential value. You create one ambassador that creates 10 ambassadors that creates 100 ambassadors, right? The whole point of community is these viral, viral models that are empowering people to build your product, to grow your business, to do all these different things. So what if it actually looked like this? The conversation is very different, but when you're expected to show data and prove out what the value is in the short run, for something that actually looks like this, there's a misunderstanding and a misalignment, right? So, you know, this is a dilemma that I think about a lot. On one hand, we, in our training, we, we train in how to figure out where community brings value to your business, how to track it, how to grow it. We think about that a lot because in order for community to get that buy-in, we need to be able to make that case. At the same time, we have a lot of companies in our community who just they believe in community, and yes, they track things to optimize how they're building that community over time, but they're gonna build community, and doing anything else is unacceptable because they believe it's core part of their values. Right, so there are companies now that have it as a core part of their values, and there are ones who don't. The ones who don't, we still need to be able to make this short-term case for community, and that's hard. The ones who do, that's great, but we still need to be able to show that data. We still need to be able to craft this story. And so the question I have for you today, and I hope you all think about this today, and I hope you all think about this after today, and we continue to work together on this, is what is the future you want to create? We spend every day at CMX thinking about the future of the community industry and what can we do to advance this space, right? It's actually, our mission is to advance the community industry. This is what we do every day, but we don't have all the answers. We don't have all the data. We don't know exactly how we can fill that gap in, mis in, in understanding. That's gonna be up to all of us. So community, I believe, is, is about change, right? We join communities because we wanna create a change in our lives or we wanna create a change in the world. I think all of us here are part of a community that's trying to create a change in the business world and we wanna create a change in our industry. So like seriously, take a moment and think about what is the future that you envision for this industry? 
Where do you see yourself in three years and five years as a community professional? Where do you want to see businesses and how they're investing in community? How are they proving the value? What do those teams look like? What is the value of community? What is the conversation like? Is community spread across every press article ever? Is it still a humble, up and coming side thing that businesses do? What do you envision for it? Like, really form your vision and share that with each other. Because it's up to us to create it. The people in this room are literally the people who are defining this industry right now. And if we're right, this is gonna be one of the biggest industries in the world. And the work you're doing every day, the data you're pulling in, the way you're proving out the value is actually defining what people will be doing in community and business for the next five or 10 years. So you have an opportunity to think about what you want that future to look like and start creating it. That's why we're here. And I want you guys to be ready to fight for it. This is my mom. I gotta give her a shout out too. My dad taught me about trust. My mom taught me how to fight. My mom's from Israel. If she wants to get something, don't get in her way. She'll fight for her family. She'll fight for the people she knows. She's ruthless. And, and I think I took both of those from my parents. And, and I'm fighting. I'm fighting for the industry every day. When I hear somebody mislabel community, I call it out. When I want to see the, a better definition, we fight for it. We stand up for what community is and the value it is. And internally, I hope you'll all feel strong about fighting for the value of community, fighting for yourselves, fighting for what we all do for a living. All right, so I'm gonna share just one last thing that I hope will serve as a guide for today and a guide for how we go on to build community and build this industry afterwards, and it's the CMX values. So hopefully this will help us shape our industry and figure out how we shape this business world we live in. So we have four values. They conveniently spell the word core. And I want you to think about this today. When we're interacting, we have a whole day together today. It's gonna be freaking cool. We're gonna play bowling, we're gonna do discussion groups. We have a lot of good stuff going on. But I want you to think about these four things. One is community first. You're probably all here because you wanna take back some specific tactics and things that you want for yourself to bring back to work. That's awesome, I hope you do that. But first, we're all part of this together. And if we can advance this industry and advance this group, and it gets better over the years, it's only gonna serve all of us. So as you're going through today, think about how are you serving the other people in this room? How are you sharing with them? How are you helping them solve their problems? And how are we together shaping this industry? Two is optimize for health and happiness. We believe in this in CMX with all of our heart that you have to take care of yourself in order to also take care of others. And so think about what are the things that are bringing you the most stress right now in your work? What are the things that are keeping you up at night? What are the things that are bothering you? And how can you spend today finding solutions to those? How can you leave today knowing that you have a possible solution to the thing that's bringing you the most stress? Three is raise the bar. We're always trying to push the bar higher and higher of our own expectations of ourselves and our expectations of the industry. And I hope you all do the same for yourselves. How do you raise the bar of the work you're doing, the way you hold yourself accountable, and, and the way we're all building community for these businesses. How do we raise the bar of our industry? Right? If we don't raise the bar, if we don't hold it to a higher level, how do we expect anyone else to? And finally, embrace radical communication. Be transparent with each other. Be open, be candid. I hope we develop a strong level of trust here so that you feel like this is a safe space to be able to share with each other, to be completely open. We practice radical uh, transparency, which we totally stole from Buffer, and we also practice radical candor at CMX, right? We, we want people to, uh, we want us to always be able to be open, be honest, and share everything with each other, and I hope that can be something that we build into the culture here in this room today. And number five, I didn't tell my team I added this value today, wear girl pants. <laughs> Seriously, guys, they make them out of this like stretchy material, it's like so much more comfortable than anything we wear, trust me. All right, let's do this.